Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I thought that it would be a good time to talk about my six most used designer bags of 2017. This is designed to help you work out what bags might be viable for you into 2018 when it comes to practicality and so on. I'm then going to be sharing with you the bags that I'm selling for the new year. I do this every year, it's like a spring clean. If you want to jump straight to those, they start at 9 minutes 23. If not, let's talk. The first one is this. This is my newest handbag. I got this for my birthday in November. It's in, um, so this is the Lady Dior. I've already got one Lady Dior that I've had for a couple of years now, and it's a very versatile bag, but it's very ladylike. As the name would suggest, it's very conservative. And I quite like it for certain events, but I wanted something a bit more edgy. I was invited to Paris by Christian Dior in October. And when I was there, I got to have a look at this bag. It comes in two tones. You can either get it in this, which is the patent, or you can get it in calfskin. I would never have gone for this previously. The differences are between this and the, the regular Lady Dior. Well, it's called Lady Dior Supple. And it is because it's like way squishy, whereas the regular Lady Dior is like solid. The second up, and I've sort of been surprised about this, this is the Yves Saint Laurent University bag. This is my first Yves Saint Laurent handbag. That is because I don't rate them that much when it comes to resale. All you have to do is go and look on secondhand websites and they typically they're just a bit under what they would be to buy, even brand new ones that haven't been used. And because of that, I've never wanted to go into a store and buy one. For a long time, I have wanted the Yves Saint Laurent college bag in either the medium or the large, but I am put off by the fact that when you come to resell it, the money isn't great. This was my first secondhand bag that I've ever bought as well, and I got this on Best Air Collective. It was a pretty seamless transaction in all honesty. The only downside to it, and it wasn't Best Air Collective's fault, it was the seller, is that the seller took quite a long time to send it to Best Air Collective, so it probably took about three or four weeks for me to get this. Would I buy this for full price in the shop? No. But as this will show you, this is a really good example of one that you can get at a discount. It's in great condition, came with all of the papers and I feel good because I've got the bag I want and I've got it for a, a bit of a saving. The next bag, and I use this consistently throughout the summer and I'm, I'm kind of surprised, but I'm kind of not. It's this. This is from Aspinall of London and it is called the Lottie bag from memory. You can get it in two sizes. This is the large size. I'm going to show you a size comparison. It's going to give away the next bag, but it is the same size as the Chanel Jumbo. I think in around June time, I started using this a lot. This bag is good for me when I'm going out and I might be working or I might be going out with my friends and I don't want the liability of a designer bag with me. It's got a classic look to it. It's really good quality. The leather on it's lovely and like really squidgy and feels good. The other really good thing about this is particularly in the summer, I wanted a bag that was this tone, like a beigey neutral tone. And I seriously considered getting the Chanel classic flap in the medium size in this color. Or like they have like a nudie kind of color. I didn't do it because I am someone that wears jeans a lot of the time and I don't really want to go and spend that money only to get dye transfer all over the back of it. You know when you wear it crossbody and it's against you? But equally, I don't want to buy a bag that I couldn't relax and enjoy wearing because I'm thinking, oh, has it got any marks on it? Do I need to hold it away from me? My next most used bag, and I'm so surprised about this. This is the Dior Ever. No, this is the Dior Armour and it's the... They don't describe it as a wallet on a chain. You can get a wallet on a chain and you can get a, it's got some weird name, it's like bag on a chain or something, but basically this is the bag on the chain, not the wallet on the chain. The wallet on the chain is longer and shallower. This is very practical. On the inside, it has got a section where you can keep all of your cards. It's got a zip section on the front and then a main open section in the middle. It also comes with a chain handle, so you can wear this crossbody over one shoulder, or you can take the, the chain off and you can just hold the bag. So I got this at the beginning of 2017, 
It wasn't limited edition, but they were really hard to get hold of because the price point on these was quite good at the time. They were, it was around about a thousand pounds. I really wanted the metallic, but I wanted silver. Anyway, they didn't have the silver, so I had to wait for it. And there was a chance I wasn't gonna get it. And then they found it in Paris, I think, or Nice. And then they had it sent to Harrods and that's how I got it. The next, and it's like a total classic that you saw earlier, is the Chanel Jumbo. I use this predominantly at the beginning of this year. This is the thing that sort of surprised me is normally, as I mentioned earlier, I, I get, not, I don't get bored, but I change up my handbags quite a lot to match different outfits. And this year I've noticed that I will use a bag for maybe a month or two months before I think I really should change it. And realistically, I'll probably go the whole year using any one of the ones that I've shown you here. If you are only going to buy one Chanel bag ever in your lifetime, or if you're only gonna, ever gonna buy one designer bag in your lifetime, if you want to buy something that they're always gonna make, so in like 10 years time, you can dig this out, it still looks cool, it's still on trend, it's not like a bag that they've maybe made and then suddenly you haven't seen it for the last 10 years and it looks really dated, then I recommend either a Chanel Classic Flap or the, like Hermes in either the Birkin or the Kelly or the Constance, which is my favorite. I don't love, I don't really like the Birkin or the Kelly to be honest and I don't understand the hype around them and why they're so expensive. If you're someone who doesn't believe that you can make money out of designer goods, let me just leave this here. 2007, this bag was 1,790. It's now 4,450. If you had a bag from back then, you are gonna be able to sell that for a lot more than you paid for it. Equally, I paid four and a half thousand for this. Give it 10 years, God only knows how much this is gonna be. So there are definite ways that you can do it, but you've gotta pick the right bag. And then my final bag before I talk about bags that I'm selling and why um, is this. Some of you may have seen me photograph the absolute hell out of this. Again, it was at the beginning of the year. I think it was, I stopped using the, stopped using the jumbo and then I, I bought this in February. I feel like it's rare for me to go into a store now and to see a bag that really gets me excited. A few years ago, I used to get it more and I think it's because I don't feel that you get the exciting designs and colors and textures that you used to. I feel that all of the bags are sort of becoming quite, quite boring in terms of the colors that they come out in. And so it's really rare that I walk in somewhere and I think I have to have that. There's a lot that I buy with a view to investment and I've got a Chanel boy downstairs right now um, that I've bought for that very purpose in iridescent gold. And I looked at that and I looked at that with the eye to resale as opposed to my heart is a flutter, I have to have it. But this is one exception to the rule. I don't know if this color's coming out, but it is the duskiest mauve. In February, in Chanel, because it's like the end of the winter collection, everything was brown and navy blue and, and brown. The shape of this, I saw it and I thought that would be so good for work. And um, I said to the guy, I was like, I don't like brown though. And he was like, well, hang on a minute. He comes back out from the room behind the counter. Couldn't believe it when he opened it and there was this color. This is honestly my favorite color. I love purples, but this shade of mauve is beautiful. And it goes, weirdly, it goes perfectly in winter, but also in spring, summer. I'm moving on now to bags that I'm selling in 2018, or I'm even gonna sell them now, actually. I do this every year. Some of you may remember the beginning of this year, I just put a whole load of my bags um, up for sale. Everything is for sale on my website, by the way. I do it because by the end of the year, I look in my handbag closet um, display thing, and so often I can pick out a good several bags that I bought, maybe used once, maybe didn't even use at all. And when I look at it objectively, I think it's the beginning of a year, Let's sell off what I haven't used, and if there's something that comes up later in the year that I decide I want to buy with the money that I've 
made from selling things, then that's what I do. The first bag that I'm selling is this. This was limited edition and you can't get it in this color anymore. This is the um, Yves Saint Laurent blogger bag. It's in a dusky pink. The next bag that I'm considering selling, but I'm seriously on the fence with it to be honest, is this. This is the Louis Vuitton Bria. I don't have many Louis Vuitton. I used to really be into the brand maybe five years ago and I've just sort of gone off it a bit in recent years. I'm thinking of selling this because I don't use it so much anymore, but the reason why I think I won't sell it is because I bought this bag in, well, maybe even 2011. Anyway, at the time, I'd been working on a project at work and I didn't even realize this was gonna happen, but at the end of the project, I got an email from the management and they said, oh, you've done so well on this project that we're gonna give you this bonus. And I was completely amazed. And what I decided that I was gonna do is I saved half of the bonus and then the rest of it, I wanted to get myself a bag and I chose this. It has not got a mark on it and I have used this to death. I used to use this on the tube when I was going to work and the color was limited edition as well. This was called Powder Rose and it's sort of like a gray champagne color. But I don't know, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not 100% on selling that and I think I need to be before I do it. Otherwise, I'll get that remorse thing after. Again, I've been really on the fence with it, but I'm thinking of selling my Chanel mini flap. So I got this in 2016. This was the Soul Cruise collection. And I got it at the beginning of the year and you could get it in this color, which is a coral. And on the camera, it looks, it doesn't look the color it is. It's sort of like a borderline fuchsia coral. You could get it in this color and in lavender and in black patent. And I'm a lover of this color. So I got it in this. It's basically brand new. I just haven't used it. But yeah, I'm gonna be selling that as well. The next bag, all these bags, I haven't used them except that Louis Vuitton one. Who remembers this? Did I get this in 2016? This is the Miss Dior Promenade bag. It is in, again, I've got this thing for buying limited edition colors and textures. This is a limited edition, let me get this right, Nubuck leather that is iridescent blue. It's beautiful. When you see it in real life, it is absolutely beautiful. It's got an inbuilt card holder. It's very like that last Dior um, bag actually. And it's also got this zip compartment here. This bag is quite a bit bigger than this. When you look at the size difference, this is quite thin on the inside. There's really not much room going on. This is actually way more practical. If you like small bags, but you don't think you can handle something as small as that, because that is borderline wallet on a chain then I do recommend this bag. It's got a compartment on the back, which is really good for keeping your phone. And it has got a, um, a shoulder strap. It's still got its tags on the inside. The final bag, again, it's one that I've never used. And I got this back in 2010. It's Louis Vuitton and the style name of this is Chrissy. One thing, if I can just point something out that really surprises me, is the difference in quality, whether you like Louis Vuitton or not, can I just talk about quality here? The difference in quality between this bag from 2010 and the newer ones is massive, but you can really see it when you get to the inside. Normally on the Louis Vuittons, they've got like a canvas lining. This has got a, it's like a leathery velvet lining in deep red. I'm, try, I'm gonna try and show you this. On the inside, it's so soft and just perfectly put together. This is one that I put up for sale and then I take back down again, only because it's got sort of like sentimental value to it. I don't know, I just saved up for it for ages and then when I eventually got it, I never used it because I thought, oh, what if I get dye transfer on it? And it's just because I'm, I don't know. Well, I'm showing you stuff that I'm not even 100% with, but anyway, this is another one that's potentially gonna go, but definitely those smaller bags are. This knit top, this is from Bella Freud. The jeans are from Acne at Netta Porter, and these are really nice and high, but they're not like so high that you look like, I don't know what you'd look like. You know when the jeans come up here and it looks a bit. My bracelet, I'm just wearing one of these today. This is that pearl bracelet that I've shown you before. I got this on Etsy and it's genuine pearls with silver. And then my watch is this one from Jord, which is in the black and gold. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.